While the Cowboys and Dak Prescott were negotiating on a contract over the offseason, one concept seemed to repeatedly pop up as an argument against paying the Cowboys starter. Teams who pay their quarterbacks top tier money don't win the Super Bowl. But are NFL teams really foolish to invest in the most important position in sports? Let's take a closer look. Prescott didn't get his extension, but his $31.4 million franchise tag makes Dak the highest paid quarterback in football this year. Meanwhile, Patrick Mahomes just inked a 12-year, $503 million contract with the Chiefs. Both moves fly in the face of the modern formula for winning a Super Bowl, which was established in 2011 when the NFL signed a new collective bargaining agreement with its players. One of the biggest changes made in that negotiation was to institute a new rookie scale, which paid rookies a predetermined amount according to their draft slot. In the process, it drastically reduced salaries for players taken at the top of the draft who were most often quarterbacks. Here's how much things changed. In 2010, first overall pick Sam Bradford became the first player in NFL history to get $50 million guaranteed when he signed a six-year, $78 million deal with the Rams. The following year, the Panthers only needed to give Cam Newton a four-year, $22 million contract. That move shifted the economics of the NFL. By 2012, four young stars, Newton, Andrew Luck, Colin Kaepernick, and Russell Wilson, were making less than Bradford combined. It's easy to see why cheap quarterbacks allow for better overall roster construction. Every dollar saved can be spent elsewhere. Take these three examples of Super Bowl winning quarterbacks on cheap rookie deals. That tiny Russell Wilson salary we mentioned earlier let the Seahawks add Michael Bennett and Cliff Averill to their defensive line. Carson Wentz's deal allowed the Eagles to sign Alshon Jeffrey and Nigel Bradham. The Chiefs went into free agency with the money they were saving on Mahomes and signed Sammy Watkins and Tyron Matthew. One veteran's contract also helped the cause. Tom Brady has been able to take discounted contracts with the Patriots in recent years thanks to the fact that he's already earned more than $230 million during his long career. These team-friendly deals helped the Pats win three more titles in the last decade. The formula of having either Brady or a quarterback on one of those bargain rookie deals has helped win six of the nine Super Bowls since that 2011 season. And yes, you're reading that right. 52 quarterbacks were paid more than Russell Wilson when he won his ring. But the other three Super Bowl winners bucked the trend. The Ravens got their ring with Joe Flacco, who was making league average starter money when he got hot and won it all in 2012 and two quarterbacks have won while occupying a significant portion of their team's cap space. And they're both Mannings. In 2011, Eli Manning had the fifth largest cap hit of any quarterback, and his Giants barely made the playoffs before their Super Bowl run. In 2015, meanwhile, big brother Peyton was on his last legs for the Broncos. The future Hall of Famer had the sixth largest cap hit of any quarterback, threw nearly twice as many interceptions as touchdowns, was benched for part of the season, and was eventually carried to a title by the defense. So not only can you win a Super Bowl with an expensive quarterback, but you can win one with a costly quarterback who lost his job to Brock Osweiler. Furthermore, the line between Super Bowl winner and loser can be pretty thin. In 2016, Matt Ryan was making $23.8 million and had the third largest cap hit in football. He had a career year, won league MVP, and led the Falcons to the Super Bowl. As you may remember, Atlanta went up 28-3 in the third quarter before blowing their lead. Did Ryan's contract let Julian Edelman make that ridiculous catch or cause the defense to gas out after facing 95 snaps? Did Ryan's contract cause holding penalties to knock Atlanta out of field goal range twice in the fourth quarter? Sure, the Super Bowl winner was on a team-friendly deal, but you're crazy if you think 2016 was evidence that only a cheap quarterback can win it all. Go back past 2011 and you'll find more examples. Four teams won Super Bowls in the prior decade while dishing out a top 10 cap hit to a quarterback. And yes, the 2001 Patriots blew 10% of their cap on a quarterback who played just two games. Having a star quarterback on a rookie deal where their compensation is capped is a competitive advantage for teams who can pull it off. At the same time, as teams like the Browns and Jets can tell you, 
that model only works if you draft and develop the right guy, which is much tougher to do before actually seeing these quarterbacks play. The best way to win a Super Bowl is to get the best quarterback you can find and keep him around for as long as possible, which is why the Chiefs locked down their MVP for the next 12 years. And by the way, despite the eye-popping number on the deal, Mahomes' cap hit still ranks just 29th amongst quarterbacks in 2020. Whether you believe in this new formula or not, the Chiefs are going to be just fine. Thanks for watching ESPN on YouTube. For live streaming sports and premium content, subscribe to ESPN+.